Well, I want to show this play. This is a heck of a throw here by AJ Swan on a scramble drill. But the real reason I want to show you what's happening here is because on just every, we're, we're five minutes into the first quarter here. I've seen a few few snaps from Vanderbilt already. Missouri is playing man-to-man -man defense on every single snap that I can notice so far here. And all that tells me, and certainly this is man-to-man -man defense here. Isn't that obvious to all of us? Everybody's just chasing their man around. Well, Swan breaks a tackle here. Look like DJ Coleman almost got him. He buys a little bit of time. This guy does a good job of sprinting downfield. I mean, that is just a heck of a throw off your back foot there. But, I mean, look at that window. The point is, I think some people are probably wanting to dunk on me and saying, I thought you said the Swan kid was good. I think he is pretty good. What I think this tells me is Missouri really trusts its defensive backs, especially when Rake Straw and Chris Abrams Drain are both out there at the same time as they were on Saturday. I tell you, I think this Missouri defensive backfield is really, really impressive. This is the best tandem at corner I think Missouri's had since I honestly don't know when. I'd have to think about that. Now, this interception here is just a dreadful, dreadful decision by Brady Cook. There's no sugarcoating it whatsoever. You see, I believe it's Cody Schrader who comes across the formation here. Looks like the play is probably designed to come back to him in the flat for in the flat, excuse me, for just an easy gain. As you can see, there's nowhere to really go with the football here. The, the player who's coming across the middle here certainly isn't open. You don't want to throw it to him. It looks like the guy on the opposite side of the field isn't even really running a route. It's just more blocking on the play. So there's absolutely nowhere for Cook to throw the football here. So you know what? Just do that. Just throw it away. It's an easy, just eh, throw it out of bounds and move on to the next play. Unfortunately, Cook just thinks, well, I'll try to make something happen here. Hopefully, he'll catch this ball and maybe he'll break a tackle or something. The problem is he's got his back to the line of scrimmage. Where exactly is Cody Schrader going to go there even if he catches it? More often than not, that is a no gain. The risk is just not worth the reward there. You just... I agree that Schrader needs to go after that football. He's got to be more alive there since I suspect he's the probably the number one guy. I think he thinks Brady Cook's going to try to scramble there or throw it away, honestly. That's just a miscommunication. You know, I was trying to say, well, maybe Schrader should do this or that. This is 100% on Brady Cook. This is just his fault. He's got to throw that ball away, period. <laughs> And when you know it, more aggressive man-to-man -man coverage by Missouri. A lot of 14-on-14 14 14 violence in this game. You saw Chris Abrams drain on the right of your screen over here with another 14. Will Shepard, who's off to a really good start for Vanderbilt, by the way. Look at this coverage, though, by Abrams drain. Again, guy leads the, the conference in touchdown receptions, I believe. So, hey, we'll just – but guess what? We, Chris, we trust Chris. We'll leave him over here on an island, and he's all over him too. Look at this coverage. So what does Shepard do? As he has to push out of the way, and guess what? Draws the flag. That takes after Brady Cook gives up that interception, obviously. Now that'll push Vanderbilt back out of field goal range. So not only excellent coverage – Coverage is so good that he draws the P.I. and probably takes some points off the board. So Chris Abrams drain looking more and more like a pro with each passing week. I'll be the first one to admit breaking down offensive line play, not my strong suit. Having said that, here's something I've seen over and over again from Missouri against their zone blocking scheme. You'll notice the man on the far left here the right side of your screen, I should say, but at the left tackle, Javon Foster, boy, he's got a long way to go here if you're going to ask him to block the nose, the nose guard here, the nose tackle, whatever you want to call it, the guy who's closest to the center here in the A-gap. Let's roll it. And you'll notice, as has happened over and over again, the guy in the A-gap, the nose guard, is able to slip in between Missouri's zone blocking scheme and makes the play for a loss on first down again just watch how far Foster has to come here to get this guy 
It's just asking a lot to, to tell that guy you need to get in front of that player. If he's in the B gap, fine. But A gap, that's a long way to go. If that guy gets up field at all, he's going to be able to get his shoulders inside of Foster, and he does just that. Frankly, I think they ha- the guard has to at least chip that guy, doesn't he? Well, he doesn't. Ends up blocking nobody really of consequence on the play. Listen, I'm not saying that zone blocking can't or doesn't work, but I've just seen this over and over again for whatever reason. That A-gap guy is just able to zip in through and blow the play up time and time again. Although I didn't show you any other plays from Cook so far other than the interception, I actually thought he looked pretty good on the opening drive for the most part, but I wonder if that interception may have got him a little hesitant because on this play, to me, Barrett Bannister here in the slot has got to be your primary receiver. I also don't love this play design, by the way. This is just me. I don't love any play where... Every single route is a hitch. As you'll see here, all three receivers who are on the line, everybody runs a hitch. A curl, whatever you want to call it. Just a little hitch route. Looks like about a 10-yard hitch here for Barrett Bannister. And if you just look at the timing here, this is very much a timing-based route, a little play-action fake. This is definitely not a run-pass option. If you just look at the offensive line here, they're very much in pass-block mode here. But if you look at Bannister, he's got 23 backpedaling. If that ball comes out right as Brady Cook pulls it, as 23's backpedaling here, he's got a 10-yard gain. But he hesitates a little bit. Nobody else is open. Everybody else is, frankly, way too covered. And again, this is my problem with the play design here. If I don't want to throw that hitch to Bannister for whatever reason, it sure would be nice if maybe on the other side of the play, can I at least have a shallow crosser? a slant, maybe even just a deep ball over the top that I can just chuck instead of having to throw this away, essentially. So that's a play design problem, but to me, also showed a little bit of hesitancy there for Brady Cook. I thought this ball to Bannister is open if you're just on time. That thing has to be out of your hands before he's even settling in to his route there at the very end. Once again, you want to talk about having some confidence in your secondary in a matchup. My goodness, look at what Missouri's doing here. It's first down and 10 for Vanderbilt. It's not fourth and one. It's first down and 10, and Missouri has eight guys right, not only in the box, but eight guys, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys within two yards of the line of scrimmage essentially inside the tackle box. That's nuts. And the other three guys, the trips here, well, they're all just man-to-man. I mean, that is just disrespectful. If I'm a quarterback, if I'm an offensive coordinator, I'm a little bit upset that they're doing this. I mean, give me some kind of slot fade here to 16 or something. If 14 Will Shepard, if he can't win one-on-one with Chris Abrams' drain right now, well, give me something. Design something that's going to go downfield and take and give me advantage of all that space that's down there. My goodness. But, and if, and you know what? If Missouri can win all three of those matchups one on one, I guess I got to tip my hat. But here's what I'm not going to do I'm not just going to run the ball into this wall here, which is exactly what Vanderbilt does. And it goes for them about how you'd expect. I mean, where in God's name is number four supposed to run the ball here? There's, they just don't have enough guys to block. There's no chance here. This is what you decide to run if you're Vanderbilt? Come on now. We can do better than this, can't we? But Missouri, Blake Baker, once again, just showing wild, wild confidence in his secondary in this matchup. Now, just to prove that Blake, Blake Baker isn't completely reckless, here we go on third and 11. Missouri with two safeties deep. Incredible. And yes, they do actually play some zone coverage here. Tries to throw it down to the tight end, and the safety is just all over that. I believe that's Jalen Carlisle. I could be wrong. Nice play there. So 
So typically Missouri going to play a lot of tight man-to-man coverage again, unless they get to obvious, obvious passing situations like that. It's funny to me how this play works. This particular style of play, Drinkwitz has run a lot and pretty effectively at times, but watch how the running back, number 20, Schrader, well, he doesn't even go with where this play is being faked to. See, the entire Missouri offensive line and the tight ends, well, they go to the left. So, of course, and the defense flows with them, by the way, for the most part. Almost everyone goes with this play. Brady Cook takes one step that way to sell it as well, but then spins back this way, throws it to Schrader for a nice little easy nine-yard gain there. But isn't it just funny how these guys watch the offensive linemen, especially the guards and the center so much to try to key in on, oh, that's a well, that's a run, and you can just get them to go the other way, despite the fact that the running back never for one second sells that this is a run to the left. He just goes... I'm just going to sprint right immediately, and people are fooled. Well, this time, the much maligned Missouri offensive line gives Brady Cook a really clean pocket, and the also maligned Brady Cook makes a pretty nice throw here. Amazing how that happens. You give a guy a clean pocket, and good things happen, especially downfield. Hey, a downfield throw in a Drinkwitz offense. It can be done, folks. But again... Some of that stuff goes together, right? We want to see Missouri take shots downfield more. Explosive plays have often been the ticket for the Tigers this year, but hard to run those when you're not blocking well. This was a time Missouri gave him a clean pocket. Brady steps up a little bit, buys himself just a tiny bit more time, lays in a nice easy ball there for Towski Dove. Big play. Once again, Chris Abrams drain on an island. Let's see what happens. This time, they are insulted, and they do take a shot downfield, but look at Chris on the right side of your screen, just right in his hip, running stride for stride with Will Shepard, unable to get any separation whatsoever. In fact, Abrams drained with as good a chance to make that catch as Shepard. But really, just a, just a really great game from him. Take this film and send it to the NFL guys for sure. Case in point here about trying to get the ball downfield. I think that's exactly what Missouri and Brady Cook is trying to do here to Dominic Lovett, who's over on the left side of your screen here in the slot. If he has enough time here, oh, yeah, I think Lovett is actually possibly open. You could throw the ball deep down the field there for a bomb potentially. But, of course, look at what happens with the nose guard here. 75 for Missouri just gets beat inside basically immediately 99 just comes unblocked and sacks Brady Cook now I suppose you could say well Brady should have immediately thrown the crosser here I mean Mookie Cooper is barely even into his route there there's a linebacker in the middle there I, I just there's nothing Cook can do here let's be real this one's on the line play All right, once again, right side of your screen, Abrams, Drain, and Shepard. This time, Shepard makes a pretty good move here, shows some of his ability. Actually, initially kind of beats Abrams, Drain off the ball. You can see he kind of fakes it to the outside, comes back inside. But really good closing speed here by Chris Abrams, Drain. Doesn't interfere, makes excellent timing here, and makes a play on the ball. Man, what a game he played. Yep, the initial beat, but just sticks with it, sticks right on his hip, looks at his arm or looks at his eyeballs. Really great timing there on the pass breakup. Just gets the arm in there without actually interfering. Beautiful. I'm actually going to show you two snaps in a row here. This time they move Will Shepard over to the opposite side of the field. They're saying, you know what? Enough with this Chris Abrams drain, kid. Let's try Ennis Rakestraw. Maybe Will Shepard will have some better luck there. Well, let's see how that goes for him. Little slant pattern, Rakestraw with excellent timing, comes around without interfering, knocks the pass away. I mean, 
It's been a rough, rough half so far for Will Shepard, who's a fine player, but man, he is not having a whole lot of fun right now. So excellent play there by Rakestraw. Vanderbilt thinks, well, you know what? We've already kind of seen it, so let's go back to it again. This time, Rakestraw actually has Shepard here in the slot on the right side, so they move him to yet another spot on the field. Rakestraw trails him. Swan throws it to him. Rakestraw undercuts it, nearly intercepts the pass. I mean, like I said, folks, this is just excellent, excellent defense here. I know the... I know the offense left a lot of lot to be desired, especially in the second half, but if you like defensive football, this is pretty fun stuff here. Well, it's hard to complain about the play design on this one because it looks like Missouri is certainly going for a deep shot here to Luther Burden, and the play design ends up getting Burden down the field. You'll see Burden number three on the very left. He ends up getting one-on-one -on -one with number 43 there, a linebacker. Now, again, just freeze-frame that right here. Number 43 is probably, he might be losing his stool into his pants as we speak here. I mean, he's probably thinking, oh, no, I am not. I'm going to have to grab this man and have a pass interference here. But, unfortunately, Missouri offensive line has really struggled this year with any type of stunting action. I'm going to rewind this here to the beginning of the snap. You notice the guy here who's between 76 and 72 for Missouri in the B gap. Well, he's not going to rush that direction. He's going to stun, and he's going to come around the inside into the other gap on the, around the other side of the center, and nobody touches him. He just takes a step inside, goes the other way, and complete confusion. Nobody knows to pick him up and really it's hard to blame blame Brady Cook for this one. He's looking down the field, he's about to uncork a ball to Bur to Luther Burden, a ball that you will take all day and twice on Saturdays. I mean that is that's as good a matchup as Missouri is going to get and boom gets hit easy touchdown for Vanderbilt. <laughs> Then on the ensuing kickoff, of course, Missouri turns it over again. The ball sort of hangs up into the wind. But to me, this is a real error in terms of design by the Missouri special teams and kickoff units here. I, I just think this is horrible coaching, to be honest with you. The entire design of this kickoff team. Because you notice what happens here is this ball goes short. Well, you've got... Number zero and number four back there. Number four is Elijah Young. I believe zero is B.J. Harris, possibly Tavoris Jones. I don't know. Another running back. We've got a couple running backs out there is the point. But you notice that who is in front of those guys? Because this ball lands here at the 16-yard line. Now, arguably, listen, I'm with you. Eli Young should have been more aggressive to go up and field that ball. He needs to be waving his arm up in the air fair catch and go get it. Well, fine. But here's the problem to me with this. Look at the ball lands between Young and a guy wearing number 55. Then you've got 99 who's out with him. Number 7, is that DJ Coleman out there on the punt return or on the kick return team? The point is, don't you need to have some guys up at about the 25, 30 yard line who can potentially catch the ball in case there's some type of pooch kickoff or something like that. To me, that's much more important than having a bunch of big guys out there to potentially block for the kickoff unit. And to me, just the idea of having offensive linemen out there on the kickoff unit, you know, that, that's a lot of open field for offensive linemen to have to cover, to block. And to me, I never saw any Gary Pinkle teams doing this type of thing. I never even saw any Barry Odom teams doing this type of thing where offensive linemen were essentially the second line of return here. Because occasionally the ball is going to land short. It's going to land short of your deep kick returners. And none of those guys were looking for the ball. They were all they all had their backs to the play. Look at them. All three of these men 
on the second level have their backs to the play. They have no intention of even attempting to catch this kickoff whatsoever, and it completely bit Missouri in the butt on this play, leading to a turnover.